Hey y'all, this is William from Permapastures Farm and today we're going to talk about Chop and Drop. Alright, so what you see behind me is that uh, terrace that Justin built and go ahead and go back and check out that video. But as soon as he built this, we put in a cover crop of cowpea and buckwheat so it could uh, fix the soil basically. Um, they're both nitrogen fixers and they have these nitrogen nodules on the ends of their root hairs and they won't release that into the soil until we chop them down or until they're eaten by something or whatever. But the plant has to be pruned or killed before it'll, it'll drop that nitrogen. It's about that time of year where we wanna put in our winter cover crop and our, let me grab that real quick. And our winter cover crop consists of a house blend that came from Fifth Season Gardening. It's a company down in Asheville. And then we also mixed in a few seeds that we had just lying around that'll do well in winter or late fall or something like that. And um, so we have like collards, radishes. There's a couple different radishes in the cover crop blend. There's uh, oats also. And I think there's two different types of clover in there as well. So we're, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these seeds, we're gonna go ahead and seed it on top of what's already here. So we're not gonna chop it down first, we're gonna seed it on top. And then after we do that, we're gonna go through and chop it all down with the scythe. We just picked up a new scythe so we can give Justin's back to him. But we uh, just picked up a new scythe and it's made out of aluminum and it actually works pretty well. I did a little test patch over there further down the terrace and it, it cuts pretty well. So, uh, yeah. So the first thing we'll do is throw out these seeds and then we'll cut down the existing cover crop. So that cover crop I just seeded is going to serve a few different functions. Uh, the radishes in there are gonna grow into the soil and they're gonna create a like a tuber in the soil and whenever it rots and decomposes in there, it's a bunch of worm food. So the worms are encouraged to go through the rotten food and till it into the ground naturally and leave behind worm castings. The crimson clover and the, uh, I think red clover in there they're both nitrogen fixers. So they're gonna serve the same purpose that these cowpeas did in that they're gonna collect atmospheric nitrogen, push it down into the roots, and then it's on these little white nodules on the ends of the roots. And whenever they die or they get eaten or they get chopped down or whatever, they're gonna release the nitrogen into the soil, making it available to the surrounding plants. And what we're doing is really preparing the soil for when we put in trees. So we're making this raw soil better and ready and more susceptible for the trees that we're going to be planting I think later this fall. So now that the seeding is done we're going to go ahead and move over to the scything and this is just satisfying for me to do it. I, you can use a weed eater if you want to but just swinging the scythe back and forth is just kind of satisfying. So we'll get some footage of that and then I'll see you in a minute. All right, so now that that first section is done, 
since this is a blade, every once in a while you need to hone it. And that's not the same thing as sharpening. Honing is basically straightening your blade edge. Uh, sharpening is removing material. We don't want to do that. So what you can use, if you don't have any honing rods or anything like that, you can actually use a screwdriver. And on these scythe blades, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a ridge on either side. So it makes it really easy for sharpening and honing because you just lay your honing rod or screwdriver on that ridge and on the edge of the blade. And as long as both are making contact, that's the perfect angle. You usually want to be wearing gloves while you're doing that because this is actually a pretty sharp edge. Uh, so it's, it doesn't need to be sharpening or it doesn't need to be sharpened at all. It just needs to be straightened out and that'll help improve your cutting performance and stuff like that. So the first little section is done. We're going to go ahead and move on down the terrace and I'm going to stop where I ran out of seeds. So that'll be the demarcation point. Alright, that's everything. Uh, everything's sewed uh, and then everything's chopped down on top of that. Now when you do your chop and drop, you usually want to time it so where your condensation or your precipitation is higher than your evaporation. So either in your wet season or right before your wet season, or because if you wait too long after the wet season, then it's going to be too much for you to handle, uh, especially if you live in the tropics or something like that. But you want to do it when your precipitation is higher than your evaporation. So it's supposed to rain for the next couple of days and these seeds should be popping up before too long. So until the next time, this is William from Permapastures Farm. Thanks for watching.